Hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons. In this video, we're going to be looking at the f effects of floods, um, mainly the socio-economic and environmental effects of floods. So we've already gone through the in the previous part, okay, what are some of the causes of floods? Uh, what are some of the factors as well, uh, be it human or physical factors? So in this next part, we're going to look at what are the effects, okay? What happens when there is a flood, okay? What effects does it actually bring? So, like I just mentioned, okay, we're going to be going through two main areas. So, we're going to have the socioeconomic effects as well as the environmental effects of floods. Uh, because this is physical job syllabus, so I would say focus more on your environment. Okay, look at the environmental effects. I think that will play a more crucial role. So, first, let's go through what the socioeconomic effects are. So, namely, what are the social effects and the economic effects? So, first one is, of course, going to be something that is very, very um, serious to a lot of people, which is death. So, um, what happens is that when you have caught floods, okay, especially flash floods, okay, it's a very, very high potential to actually kill people. Right? Flash floods can just come all of a sudden. It can be at a very, very grave and large impact. Um, and they tend to occur more frequently in your less developed countries, okay, due to the level of preparedness being lower, right, than your more or relatively higher developed, okay, or more developed countries. Um, and the measures that are put in place, okay, there aren't exactly a lot of uh, policies, a lot of strategies that are put in place to mitigate the effects of your flooding. So this can result in long-term detrimental mental impacts on third parties, such as family members, who have either lost a loved one or um, has, you know, seen it firsthand, um, all of these deaths taking place. So this can lead to psychological impacts in the future, okay, as well as uh, any sort of mental-related health issues. So death is going to be a huge um, socioeconomic effect of flooding. Health hazards as well. Okay, when there's a flood, okay, it can actually have the ability to cause a lot of um, destruction, okay, unintended destruction. Okay, for example, sewage pipes could be broken. Okay, this results in them leaking into the flood water, resulting in contamination and hence waterborne diseases to actually start spreading. So this is actually a side effect of the flood itself. Okay, you can firsthand lead to um, a lot of death, a lot of injuries to take place. But at the same time, on a secondary consequence level, okay, it can also lead to contamination, right, which can actually breed a lot of new illnesses um, in that area, for instance. So such water can infiltrate into people's homes, okay, and this can be difficult to clean and also get rid of. Okay, it can be there to stay for a long time. Right? It doesn't exactly uh, disappear. Right? A lot of viruses uh, illnesses are actually naked to the eye as well. So this could be an issue. Okay, some may also consume contaminated water, right? If they are, you know, especially if they are living in the less developed countries, they can't treat the water. Um, they may just have to resort to this drinking water that they find. Okay, and this can actually be um, harmful, right, for some people's health. Okay, in fact, a lot of them. So for instance, during the 2004 Bangladesh floods, okay, there was in, an outbreak of diarrhea. Okay, namely because of the high levels of um, contaminated water that was being consumed by the people in the area who were affected by the flood. Right, next one is damage to property and infrastructure. This one is very, very clear. Right, when you have a flood, definitely a lot of your buildings are going to be affected. Uh, water is going to seep into everywhere. Your houses, okay, a lot of these things are going to be affected by the flood waters. Okay, so one of the biggest economic effects of a flood is the damage to property and related infrastructure. Okay, water can cause a lot of damage to property. Okay, it can collect large chunks of debris along the way, such as cars, uh, parts of buildings, trash, okay, a lot of these things, and it will just sweep it all into a lot of these buildings, right? In fact, uh, a clear example would be during the Singapore flood, right, back in the early 2000s. And right, what happens is that a lot of different shops, okay, were actually flooded because um, the flood just came off a sudden, bought, a, bought it with it all the different trash bins and all the various materials that were just lying around and it resulted in a lot of damage to a lot of shops, a lot of businesses. So it affects a lot of these local businesses and the replacement okay, or to even repair any of these damaged infrastructure can actually be very, very costly, right? A lot of these uh, buildings or whatnot, okay, they can cost a lot. Okay, and hence, in less developed countries will definitely suffer more economically if their buildings are heavily affected. So this could be one more issue okay, of the um, a flood, okay, especially the flash flood. Um, it is the economic side to things. 
Okay, the next one will be unemployment. So unemployment is a issue that tends to occur post flood. Okay, so in order to fully recover from from a flood, okay, a lot of time is needed. So businesses that are actually not able, okay, they are unable to fully recover from floods, okay, would have um to leave a lot of people jobless, okay, because they don't even have money to sustain the business itself. So the most effective way to cut their costs would actually be to reduce the labor that they are currently employing. Okay, so this could result in laying off of workers, okay, leaving a lot of households um, during such a time of crisis with barely any household income. So this results in increased unemployment and hence lower living standards amongst a lot of your households. And um, definitely this is not a good combination during a time of uh, flooding, okay, during a time of crisis, okay, because um, it definitely has a very, very detrimental impact on the entire society in general. So unemployment would be one more um, of your socio-economic impacts of flooding. Okay, we move on to the environmental impacts. So this one we're going to be looking specifically at what are the impacts that a flood does have on the environment. So first of all, uh, first off, there's going to be erosion of land. So as flood waters recede, okay, there will actually be massive erosion due to all your all your different fluvial processes. Okay, when there's a lot of flooding that occurs. Okay, definitely it is going to erode. Okay, it's going to transport and going to deposit a lot of the sediments that it has picked up or has encountered along the way. Okay, because of water erosion. So as a result, okay, a lot of materials will be dislocated and transported. Uh, this leads to increased soil erosion as well. Right? When there's a lot of flood waters, it's going to erode the soil in the area. Okay, hence there will be a change in the physical landscape. But this is without a doubt, right? You just think post flood, okay, a lot of different landscapes are definitely heavily affected, right? They look very, very bad. They look torn apart, right? This is actually a result of flooding, okay? So it erodes the land. Um, there's also a destruction to ecosystems. So flood waters can actually destroy large acres of natural vegetation, okay? And this could be home to many species of flora and fauna, okay? Meaning to say that um, not just your own uh, vegetation that is growing or the plants that are growing okay but in fact a lot of animals as well okay that are in the area okay so when river floods onto farmland okay the water may be polluted by pesticides a lot of farmers they resort to using pesticides to ensure that their plants uh, grow faster okay and they grow to become either more juicy or you know have a greater flavor to them okay and so pesticides can actually uh it's a chemical okay that when washed by water okay can actually lead to it becoming a more potent chemical right so it can pollute and actually kill certain wildlife in the river right especially those which are consuming these pollutants uh, higher levels of flooding may also kill animals on low-lying ground okay if your ground is not exactly say uh, on the hill okay it's a very very uh, low-lying area right when there's flooding okay what happens that it can actually bring about a lot of uh, destruction to the animals that are unable to let's say swim okay, or unable to escape in time all right so this is the result of a flooding on your ecosystem so for evaluation, okay, it's very simple. Um, this chapter is still going to be part of your physical geography syllabus. So hence, you should always focus on the more physical aspects, okay, the physical effects of floods. I know that in this video, we have covered a lot on your uh, socioeconomic side to things, okay, but reason being is that um, in the event that you need to bring in an alternative perspective, okay, that will be where you can justify to say that the effects of floods can also affect the socioeconomic status of a country. But mainly, um, because when you look at floods, okay, if, if you're looking at normal fluvial floods, okay, that means those that come from the river, right, then you will be looking more towards the environmental impacts. Okay, if you're looking at a city, you're looking more at flash floods due to urbanization, right, and that would mean that there are more socioeconomic effects as compared to environmental effects in the area instead. Okay, so e effects of floods, okay, both your socioeconomic and environmental effects, they are bound to occur, okay, but the extent to which it is um, either very, very severe okay, or very, very mild. Okay, these effects are going to be determined by whether there are actually um, proper mitigation measures okay, and proper strategies that are put in place. Okay, we'll go through some of these mitigation measures and strategies in the next video. Okay, but essentially, if a government okay, is well prepared for a flood, they put in place certain policies, certain strategies in the country, then chances are is that 
even if there is a very very high level high impact flood the people should not be as heavily affected okay the area should not be as heavily compromised right there is still room for them to recover very very quickly and for the effects of these floods to actually be mitigated and lowered to a very very small extent right so this would be your evaluation okay it would be that it depends on whether the government has put in place various strategies to mitigate the effects of floods so when it comes to your exam requirements, uh, very, very simple. You just need to be able to explain and discuss the various socioeconomic and environmental effects of floods. And as well as to use evaluation techniques where required to assess the significance of whether these impacts um, have, uh, whether these effects okay, actually have a huge impact on your society. So very simple. So just make sure that you always bring in your evaluation techniques where required and uh, the various effects that you have learned over here okay you can always tie it into the factors okay your urbanization factors um, as well as later on the strategies in the next part of this uh, series okay to explain um, why the impacts of floods can be so significant so if not that's all i have for this video i think it's a very um, straightforward part of your flood syllabus so if you have any questions you can just leave it in the comment section below i will answer them as well as uh, do be sure to give this video a like and to subscribe if you did learn anything from it and if not i'll see you guys in the next part on your strategies to control this these effects of um, floods all right i'll see you guys then bye bye